Hi, it's Dwyer. Always 1776.com. Also, wealthspinning.blogspot.com. It is August 21st, 2024. Warning, nothing I say in this video should be construed as investment advice. It's incumbent upon you to do your own due diligence. I'm just sharing what interests me at the moment. Right? Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's try to focus on issues rather than on any political candidate. Right? Just understand my bias. Right? I'm one of those free market types. I view politicians in general with some suspicion. So, understand whenever any politician, and we're not going to name any in this video, but whenever any politician this election season starts talking about taxing unrealized gains, just recognize that they're coming after cryptocurrency profits, right? Understand how good cryptocurrency and gold and silver are right now. Right? You can hold Bitcoin, you can have huge gains as long as you don't sell that Bitcoin. You don't have a taxable event. Right? So your net worth is jumping. Wealthy people know how the game is played. Let's say I bought Bitcoin at $10,000. Let's say today it's just a smidge under $60,000. I can go into a bank. I can pledge the Bitcoin as collateral. The bank will then lend me tens of thousands of dollars. Right? Particularly the current banking system. Right? There's some banks out there that would do that. I get tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> I can spend that on whatever I want. Right? My lifestyle has been enhanced. If I'm smart, I can spend it on, you know, buying stock like MicroStrategy that actually deals in Bitcoin in a leveraged manner. They'll take on debt themselves to buy more Bitcoin. Right? I can be on the you know, money side of the ledger versus the currency side of the ledger. I can soak in all that appreciation without having a taxable event take place. Right? Gold, same thing. You know, they say gold doesn't pay dividends. Well, great. I don't want to be taxed on dividends. I just want the appreciation. I want the unrealized gains. So here again, just understand, I have a gold bar. If it appreciates in value, I don't have to report anything on my taxes. My family's wealth has appreciated. Because if we get a bill, if there's a medical emergency, if there's any kind of financial emergency, we have this gold bar to sell that we got much cheaper many years ago. Right? It's an asset. By the way, gold over the last 20 years has outperformed the stock market. Food for thought. Right? So, when you have a politician now talking about taxing unrealized gains, I need for people to be clear on that. They're going after your crypto profits that haven't been realized. They're going after your gold profits that haven't been realized. They're punishing you for shrewd investments in which you bought appreciating assets. Let's shift gears for a moment here too. Price gouging. Understand what's being proposed right now in political circles. They want to blame grocery stores for the inflation we've all been suffering from. Right? After all, it's when you're in a grocery store that you realize how much the
price of eggs have increased in nominal costs. Right, so of course, politicians have come up with a clever idea. It's not us printing money. Right, Milton Friedman's wrong. It's, it's not us with the money printing. No, it's the grocery store that's to blame for the higher meat prices, the higher egg prices, the higher prices for butter. Right, you should blame them. Not only that, you should vote for us because we're the people who are going to crack down on that price gouging. Now we're in an internet era. I want people to look up the profit margins on groceries. You'll be surprised to learn that grocery stores in general have extremely thin profit margins. Extremely thin. Right? 3% or less. 3% if they're lucky and well run. Right? So what they're doing here is to try to scapegoat businesses that already have extremely lean profit margins for the inflation that they're money printing when you're dealing with the same level of goods and services has caused right again I just challenged the viewer here contrast the profit margins of grocery stores with the typical profit margin of an S&P 500 company you're going to find that grocery stores in general have profit margins of less than half your typical S&P 500 company. Also understand too, in the United States, right, there's a House of Representatives, there's a Senate. If I'm going to, if I'm President of the United States, if I'm going to get anything passed, I need to do it with their cooperation. So a candidate will run for the presidency, but their power is limited. They can only tell you what they're going to present to Congress. Understand too, the members of Congress have their own constituents, which might disagree, even if the representative or senator is from the same party as the new president. The constituents might actually disagree with the new president. So what I need for people to understand is that these presidential candidates are giving you very defined agendas that if they hit Congress would be changed because the people in Congress have to horse trade right okay I'll vote on this if I get that I'll vote on this if that is changed this way right it's when a bill hits Congress that rubber hits the road so just understand any proposal that any presidential candidate makes is going to have some give and take on it it's gonna change somewhat to get congressional approval so you've heard me mention grocery stores. You and I know that there are other food servers in the United States, right? Restaurants, for example. How about stores like Costco and Target that actually sell clothes, but also have grocery store sections, right? You need to understand that there's a risk that as a bill that is targeted for grocery stores hits Congress and as, you know, the research aides to the representatives and senators figure out that trying to squeeze grocery stores with below 3% profit margins isn't going to solve inflation. Right? And by the way, that's at a time where we're learning that the job numbers were inflated by, oh, about 800,000 jobs. In other words, the Fed is likely to cut rates, leading to more inflation. Understand the inflation rate as I make this video is not zero. Prices are still going up. Now you can imagine what happens. A bill hits Congress, there's debates. People will say, well, wait a moment. How does 
squeezing grocery stores help really us fight inflation, uh, particularly since you're talking about giant chains, right? It, it's not like Walmart is gouging customers right now. It's not like Safeway is gouging customers right now, right? With a 3% margin, how would we ever prove in any court of law that this uh, outfit is gouging anyone? So then somebody is going to have the bright idea. Well, wait a moment. You know, let's craft the bill so that a store like Costco that actually serves meat and has a grocery section in addition to selling bikes and camping equipment and clothes, um, we're going to say that they fall under the ambit of this bill, right? You know, the margins on clothes are higher than they are on groceries, right? Why don't we have oversight of Costco's clothes selling? You know how these bills suddenly emerge and they're much more regulatory than was initially sold to voters before the election. So just understand, if I'm going to monitor your business for price gouging, I need a government apparatus that can do that. So at a time when we're $35 trillion or so in debt, we're going to have to grow government and it's going to have to grow in such a way that I can actually have my people going through Costco's books, going through Target's books, because of course we've set this up where we're blaming them, these discount retailers, for the inflation we're suffering. Right? Consumers might be wondering, hey, you know, when inflation's up, when I go to the gas station, not exactly a grocery store, I notice gas pricing has jumped. Why am I blaming grocery stores? The politicians are going to smile for the camera. They don't want you thinking that way. They want you complaining about the price of eggs so they can go into Costco and Target and look at their full books. How else would they know if Costco or, Tar or Target's gouging you on food unless they looked at the full books? They don't want you to look at the other things in the economy that have jumped in price. If you stream media, right, you know that Disney recently raised their streaming costs, right? But understand, what's currently being proposed only involves grocery stores. Why are we nitpicking on inflation that's across the entire economy? So just ask yourself, how much are you willing to spend to increase government so that you have an apparatus that can actually track price gouging? Also, when has that worked in history? Right? I thought Eastern Europe failed. I thought planned economies in general, we're not as robust as market-based economies. Where's East Germany today? Didn't East Germany become part of a greater Germany that has free markets? Right? Isn't Russia today much more free market-based than the USSR was? Didn't they even liberalize in China? And hasn't the Chinese standard of living jumped? as they've made that economy more market-based. Why would we want to go back to centralized planning? Now let's jump the fence here. There's talk of tax on unrealized gains. Folks, think about it. For the government to know which gains are unrealized, you're going to have to fill out and disclose a lot more of your financial picture. Right, so that house that has appreciated in value, where you're thinking to yourself, okay, great, you know, um, on paper I have more wealth, but I don't plan to sell the house anytime soon to realize that wealth because little Johnny and little Susie is in 7th and 8th grade. We like the school district, and I don't want to even think about moving since I know my neighbors, we have a social life here, until these kids graduate from the local high school. 
the government wants to be able to step in, or at least some candidates running for presidency want to be able to step in and say, hey, wait a moment. We need to tax you on that unrealized appreciation that you have in these assets. Right? And so you can imagine you're going to have to do things that you don't normally do. You're going to have to get things appraised. Aren't you? You know, I have some gold bars. I'm going to have to actually sit down and calculate how much gold I have. I'm going to have to go into storage. And I'm going to have to figure out how much of certain assets I have. Let's say I have gold hidden away in a storage unit someplace. I'm going to have to go there and count the amount of gold. So I can then say, you know what, gold is up this year. Gold, by the way, is around record highs as I make this video. So I can report it to the government. Even though I had this in storage, really have it for the kids. Don't plan to sell it. Many gold bugs never sell their gold. Don't plan to sell it. But I'm going to have to find a way to report it and monitor it. How much is that going to cost you? Right? Think about the audit forms. You think your tax form is long now. Right? If they're going to start taxing unrealized gains, think about the assets you have that have appreciated in value. Right, That old rusty car that's in the driveway, that's now a classic because it's 30 years old. Right, That Mercedes-Benz from 1994 that you barely drive. I have an 89 Mercedes-Benz that I barely drive. Right, Some days I wake up and I think, is this the day I call Carvana? But I think, what's the harm in having this car? I've had it for a long time. Good memories. Right? You can imagine someone from the government saying, Hey, you know, Mr. Dwyer, that old Mercedes that you barely drive, the one with cobwebs, it's appreciated in value. Right? It's, it's now at the point where you're actually realizing an increase in value for the car. So you're going to have to get that car appraised so we can tax you on the appreciation in value folks these good sounding ideas aren't good when you actually think about the disclosure requirements and the cost of enforcement as well as the absurdity quite frankly of blaming grocery stores with sub three percent profit margins for the inflation we're having right let me just add too. stores like McDonald's whose motto is one of them you deserve a break today do you really think that they're going out of their way to price Big Macs to where you're losing the cost advantage right now the Big Mac is is priced in such a way that you might as well go to a sit-down restaurant right folks they're increasing the price because of course the government the same government that wants you to believe they're acting in your best interest is imposing costs on them I'm in California the cheapest they can hire a worker here is twenty dollars an hour twenty right understand what that has led many McDonald's to do they're developing kiosks right without this ridiculous rule they could hire two, three teenagers, right? When I was a kid, if you were to give me 10 bucks an hour, seven bucks an hour, I'm thinking, wow, you mean now I can afford gas to put in the car? The old car I'm driving that now might be appreciating in value, right? You know, just, just think this through, right? So in my opinion, a lot of what we're hearing doesn't work, isn't sustainable, worse yet, wouldn't solve the problems that the politicians pushing these ideas would solve. Right? Let me point out, you know I don't like mercantilism. I don't believe in economic nationalism. I also don't believe in this whole price gouging fantasy. Right? You want to know what works better than price controls? Free markets look through history let's talk about other things you know EVs are under pressure 
No question about it. All you have to do is look at Tesla's stock price over the years. Right? But understand the technology is evolving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place links in the description section of this YouTube video. One of them is going to be to um, regarding Samsung's development of a solid state EV battery that now will give EVs a 600 mile range on a charge and of course will charge quicker than current batteries on the market and also is supposed to last longer, supposed to last 20 years. Right, so we're talking about a huge technological leap forward in battery technology for electric vehicles. Now here's what I want you to think about as an investor. Samsung's solid state battery breakthrough involves a battery that uses a silver carbon compound. Folks, silver already is in demand because of course solar panels, that technology requires silver. Folks, the demand for silver, and keep in mind silver hasn't been at it all at its all time high for years. Right? We're in an era where, of course, gold is setting all time highs. Right, folks? If EVs new batteries are going to require additional silver, if you're a silver investor, this is a bullish time indeed. I'll put a link to the article. You can take a look at it. Also, Kitco News, there's an excellent article. Um, within the last two days on exactly this right let's also talk about another development did you know that Waymo robo taxis Waymo of course is a division of Google right Waymo autonomous vehicle technology their robo taxis are leaping off the page in terms of growth Right, the rides per week are now at a hundred thousand. So let's be futurists here for a moment. Let's think about the future. Right? I'll put a tech crunch article on the growth of Waymo so people can do the research for themselves right that'll be a great starting point to what I'm about to say but what I want people to realize is that the emergence of robo taxis could really be something that leads to a lot of profits down the road right understand uber has to pay the driver theoretically we're going to reach a point where Waymo rides are going to be cheaper than Google and Lyft rides. Right? Waymo already has taken off in several cities. Right? Understand too, as a repeat player, what that's going to do. Let's say robo taxis take off. Let's say that the company operating the robo taxis can buy vehicles at a volume that you can't the individual driver right they're gonna get discounts on costs that you the individual driver might not be able to get so you're gonna have a car without a driver right we're talking about the robo taxi that is going to be cheaper than the car you would buy individually. So one wonders, as the cost of being a passenger in these autonomous vehicles drops, and as the autonomous vehicles themselves become safer over time, right? Understand, these autonomous vehicles theoretically should become a far better driver than the 
human driver who's dealing with human error, right? As the cost of these AVs drop, and I'll have a link to a video that talks about the drop in EV prices, right? The question emerges in this day and age of not just people taking trips in an Uber, but also people getting things delivered at home using Uber One, using DoorDash. The question becomes whether people are even going to want cars. Right? I told you about an old Mercedes I have. I can't drive it, even though it drives well, but I can't drive it because I need to pass a smog check. I've already poured thousands into the car. It's park not too far from where I live. I check on it just to turn over the engine every few uh, days, right? So just understand, I have another vehicle. Um, that vehicle needs work. So I've been taking the bus, first time in years, right? I've been taking the bus and I've been enjoying the bus rides, right? Occasionally, I'll also be in an Uber uh, vehicle and stuff like that. I know the value of Uber cash. Trust me, I've been in enough Uber vehicles. But the question really is coming up, why do I need the other cars? Right? If I could take an Uber ride cheaply to where I want to go or a bus ride and understand how advanced mass transit it is. Now, if you are like me and you haven't taken it for a while. You now have apps where I can look on my app and I can get a real-time report on when the bus on my route is going to arrive at the bus stop. So gone are the days of me at the bus stop as a teenager, um, you know, taking the bus on the way to high school, bus and train in New York City. Uh, gone are the days of me wondering when the bus is going to arrive. Now I can pull up the transit app and I can see that the bus I'm going to take is two stops away and is four minutes away. Right, so the question with all this new technology, you know, I can use my phone to summon a robo-taxi, then I can hop in the car and, you know, be on my way, a uh, newer car than my old cars. Why do I need my old cars? Especially if the government's going to come up with the bright idea of trying to charge me for the appreciation on my vehicles. Why do I need that old Mercedes? Right? So, just understand what's happening in the world of autonomous vehicles. Don't confuse EVs with AVs. Right? While AVs might use EVs, that's a different world entirely. So, you can imagine... A situation where we reach the point where I'm on DoorDash and I punch up that I want food from uh, Chipotle. Then, of course, Chipotle, of course, is building these new drive through restaurants, right? This is a new setup. So, of course, DoorDash then dispatches not a person, but they dispatch a vehicle to the drive through and Chipotle, of course, is getting so much business from DoorDash that they're prepared to have the autonomous vehicle car either go through the drive through or park in the parking lot where they can then come out, find the vehicle, and just put the food in the vehicle. Understand, too, with keyless entry, they can have it so the vehicle then drives to my location. I go to the vehicle meeting place. The vehicle is locked until I use my phone to open the vehicle so I can pick up the DoorDash food that's in the vehicle. Folks, I believe all of this technology is coming. Right? There's a, there are a couple of kids in their early 20s in my family, neither of them. Neither of them have driver's licenses, right? They're just completely into, you know, DoorDash and, um, you know, Uber and stuff like that, right? The buses. So just, just food for thought. So for investors, 
Silver right now, compelling investment. Right, Google right now, even after the antitrust ruling, compelling investment. It is hard to find a company that's better situated to take advantage of the autonomous vehicle market. Right, Robo Taxis has Google written all over it. Let me also point out too, companies like Baidu. You need to know about these companies. Baidu, by the way, has been uh, testing autonomous vehicle uh, cars in Santa Clara County here in Northern California. Right, just food for thought. The price of the cars they are using are dropping in value. Understand, the autonomous vehicle market is international. Right, it just like DoorDash saves you a lot of time. Right, I can just order my food and it shows up. Right, smart people have figured out, hey, to make this cost effective, let me just order three meals right now using DoorDash and then I can have three days worth of food for the price of one delivery. Right, just like DoorDash is saving you money right now, well, time at least. Just understand that if they leap the fence, and this is only a matter of time, and these delivery services then start using AVs, right, on a widespread level, you'll be able to disintermediate, remove the cost of the driver from the equation. So for investors, Silver, Google, um, I've been talking here about Samsung's new solid state EV technology. I would take a look at those companies um, long and hard because they, to me, are all very well situated. Anyway, those are my thoughts. And of course, if any politician tries to sell you mercantilism, right? Think about it. The world is getting more international. If the American worker is protected and is not allowed to compete internationally, that means America's goods and services won't be able to compete internationally, right? I don't buy mercantilism. I certainly don't buy anti-price gouging legislation, right? Folks, the answer to high prices is high prices. If I walk into a burger place and they're price gouging customers and I'm an entrepreneur and I'm thinking to myself, wow, there's a profit to be made here by undercutting this price gouging establishment. I'll leap into the market. I'll make that profit. The consumers will win. I don't need Washington setting up anti-price gouging news, especially when Washington's targeting grocery stores with below 3% profit margins, right? That's a political gimmick that doesn't solve the inflation problem, right? Let me close by saying, I know there's another group that's thinking to themselves, oh, great, the Fed's going to cut rates right before the election wow who saw that one coming right what I need for people to understand is that when the Fed cuts rates that's often bearish not bullish that shows that the economy is in trouble understand too it takes some time for rate cuts to impact the economy right that time delay might exacerbate problems so of course you know you cut rates now and let's say the market isn't as bad off as you think. You're going to have inflationary pressures ahead. Right? Food for thought. What you want, in my opinion, is deflation, not inflation. You want goods and services to become cheaper. If the consumer is under pressure financially, you want them to be able to get food at a lower cost, the market to adjust. McDonald's, Burger King will start offering $5 meals, groceries to drop in price, right? You don't want inflation, you want deflation. One man's opinion, those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.